there are what it is and this relationship with the major sector we know we saw how we build majors for example from set theoretic properties isn't it? Uh, I want to extend uh, this discussion by looking at the properties of nature. Okay. The first basic property of major is the one which is actually inbuilt into the definition of major. Remember last week we defined the first major division. The, the difference between the end points of the interval, the real line. So, what we say from the real line and interval, A, B, we say major of uh, maybe this you have said S, we say major of S, we find it to be interval. So, the difference. Is it? it? Now, we are going to continue to build on this to say that a uh, major, a major function, a major, a major, because it looks like a function now. You, you know, we define major space uh, as uh, a combination empty set S and then the major defined S. Now on one arm you have S and you have major defined on S. So in that case the major is the like the function. Yes, so the major actually a function as a function takes values Yeah. 
that these are inbuilt into the, these are actually a from definition. There are properties which you can get from definition. Yes. Zero. Zero for empty cell has no element. Okay, so it's like you have nothing to measure. Yeah. Yes, like if you, but for example, in this class, I'm trying to find out the number of people in this first class. Is it clear? That's my major function is you have a set X, this class, X is this class, and then you give for the set. And my major of X is. So nobody has a so that we have this idea of the first place. So whenever you are trying to make your job, then it's you. That's what you made because the set you are going to measure is empty. So that way you are measuring. So that is it about uh, one of the problems. These are inbuilt properties from the definition itself. But there are other properties which will follow, of course. There are also extension of the definition of major. But they will look more like, for example, monochronicity. Now, let E1, E2, E3, dash, 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 E, subset of X, cause, X is our set, which are um, which are, um, or oh, let me check such that, which which belongs to sigma and which are such that e1 for example is contained e2 contained So they are in relation to set inclusion. So that means a sequence of uh, measurable function. Subset of sigma or measurable what is a measurable function. subsets. Remember you are sigma, what is your sigma? You are you are algebra. I think we defined sigma last week. As sigma algebra satisfies some properties. So is it that is elements are gross under union and the union elements are gross under complementation and so on and so forth. So if this one belongs to sigma, it means it satisfies those properties. Uh, a, a group of sigma algebra. Yes. Oh, it is. Sorry. Thank you. And so on and so forth. Then, major of E1 will be more let me just say that okay. and this property is called monotonicity of IE major mu is monotone. 
Mas que cinco anos. Mas que diz que é isso. Diz que é isso. Monotone. There is another type which we call monotone decreasing. When we have the reverse of this, the reverse of this will be called monotone decreasing. For example, if M major of B1 is bigger, the major of E2 uh, and so on, we call this monotone decrease. It's the exact opposite of uh, the other one. This one. So this is one of the properties of measures. That means if you break your set X into subsets such that you create a sequence of a monotone sequence. Then the measure of such sequence is also monotone. Now what it means? That is like a countable additivity. Now if E1, E2, E3, are subsets of zygomas. Uh, okay. And E one union E two union. You need one of disjoint measurable That's why we have uh, this word disjoint. Meaning, I have two 
process, success we take our students and nothing will come. And if that is the case, then the major of this union of fire from one to infinity will be the same as the limit I turns to infinity number. This is what we call sigma additivity. Or another name for it is called countable, countable additivity. Then this one, what we are saying is that 
this will be less. Major E1 plus major E2 plus again that will be and but this will be less than equal to sum I from one to infinity major and this is what it is corresponds to and this one is what corresponds to this so long as you assume and in that case you also will not need this disjointness okay just quantum union of measurable substance because if you attach disjointness, this will be equal. But because they are not disjoint, what we mean here, we are to try to say is that, for example, this is your interval. So this is your E1, and this is your E2. You discover that E1 intersection E2 is not empty, isn't it? So that means if you measure E1, you measure E1, you will get this, this image. And if you measure E2, so you will get what? The whole of this. Now, if you add E1 and E2, it's like this plus this outside plus this again. Yeah. Yeah. So, what you are going to get will be bigger than what you have. And that's why we have less here. Instead of just equal. Because we may be repeating some common uh, sets. So, that's why we need to have that. But why do we call it countable? I think the word now to should this, the key word now is countable. Why is it countable? Because we are having a sum from one to infinity. That's why we say it's because it's not finite. It's not something that will stop somewhere and that's why countable. Okay. Yes. Well I don't understand. Now what you are well, I'm just giving you breakdown of this. Let me suppose you have these sets individually E1, E2, E2. Then the short way of writing is to say you are getting the union I from one to infinity of EI. Instead of saying E1, E2, E3, and you can just write it. Get it? And the short way of writing measure of E1 plus measure of E2 plus measure. The short way is to say summation. I for what you need to measure of EI. So I'm only comparing them. What what and during this this justification, why are we using less of why are we not saying equal to here? Why do we have to say less? Because what I'm saying is that because you may have some repetition. For example, if I take him E1 is like this. Maybe suppose, let's say this is interval 1 to 2. So all the elements here between 1 and 2, you will count them here in this. Isn't it? So maybe if you are counting all numbers, how many are they? 1, 2. Number of count, all numbers are just 2. Then so let's say this is 2 to 4. Then what are the numbers? between 2 to 4, 2, 3, 4. So the numbers are 10. Now why you say measure of E1 plus measure of E2? You are going to say 2 plus 10, which is what? 5. Isn't it? But you discover that the uh, you have repeated uh, this interval here. Mm -hmm. 
and counting. When you count one to two, when you come to count two to four, you have repeated one to two again. It's like you are counting one to two times. So what you are going to get will certainly be different from when you are having the measure of this separately plus the measure of this. So that's why you need uh, this less. Yeah. Yes. It's just like you are having um if I may if you have a gallon and a jerry can. A gallon and a jerry. And you want to say the measure if you want to count them separately, measure of a gallon, measure of a jerry can. You you chase the volume together and four in one place. Now compare it with when you have a, you know what is why it's in the gallon can be bought inside a jar. So when you put a jelly gallon inside and, and you put the remaining, maybe your jelly can, can contain four gallons. When you pour the first one, you only need three more gallons to put. And you pour the jelly can on one side. So if you continue to compare the bottles, this one will have a five gallons. This one will have four, isn't it? Because this one has repeated a gallon. This one has not repeated a gallon. So the song here will repeat. The union will not repeat. Because the union will say you don't count. If you have two sets, A equal to one, two, maybe two, four, six, eight. B equals one, two, Four, five, maybe six. What is A you know? What do I need? It's just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How many elements? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the order is seven. What is the order of this? A. One, two, three, four. So the order of this is four. What is the order of this? Six. One, two, three, six. four, five, six. The order of this is six. So if you add, ten. you have ten. This one is what? Seven. Seven. So you can see this one is bigger. Yeah. So when you do the sum, you don't have to put less because of the mm -hmm. repetitive elements. Is it clear? Okay, so that's what you have as a counter union. So the last one, the, the fourth one, will be the continuity, which I think. Okay, it's still, it's still to you. Okay, the other one was two. Okay, E, T, Still be subsets of, um, of sigma. Uh, such that such that E N is contained in E N plus one. So I want to show by this I want to show that the the sets are uh, actually a monotone increasing. Okay. Then major of the union now. I from one to fifty. Okay. Will you call to the one I had before limit I times infinity? Major of uh, yeah. okay. that infinity of yeah. infinity, yes. Sorry. This is what I had before. This is what we said. Then we say, if then we say, we say that. Uh, the major EIs major 
is continuous. We say from below. You see, this is the key word here. It's continuous from below. Meaning that you begin to meet yourself from smallest one to the biggest one. So, yes. We have the other variant of this, what we call continuous from above. So we have the other way around. The big eyes are. Section, okay. major of intersection. Major. Intersection. Major of this. Major. Let again E I E one. E1, E2, and so on, B substance. Sigma, that is a measurable set. Such that, in this case, EN plus 1 is contained in EN. So, in other words, your sequence is now what? Monotone decreasing. Why you have this sequence now? If you have this sequence, E1, you want to be bigger than E2. That's the meaning. Okay? It will be bigger than what? E3. That's the meaning. So, so it's like the sequence is now decreasing. So EN plus 1 is containing. And plus one. Then, and suppose that at least one of these EIs has finite, has finite. Then major of now intersection I from one unity of E I will be equal to limit I is unity major of I. So Two, one, E, two, E, set of Let us look at that. Sub six. Sub Okay. Okay, so let's say just sub six. Call them just sub six. I think what is of interest is to compare why are we putting. Compare this now or this. Mm -hmm. Remember, here your sequence is increasing, so you are saying the measure of the union is the measure of the biggest one. Here your sequence is decreasing, so the union is the measure of the intersection is equal to the measure of the last one. The last one. Why? Because your measure yourself yourself are now shrinking. And you know the meaning, you know what is it? This one will tell you the profit the difference now between union and uh, intersectional. When you are taking union you are actually trying to get a sense of the biggest set. Isn't it? While what you are taking intersection, you are trying to get a sense of a set which has which is a small less. But intersection means you want to take something which is common. 
Well, you know you don't care about Kamo, you're only picking elements. So you keep increasing. So this one will give you a sense of the largest one. So it'll give you a sense of one. Smaller something because you are your assets are decreasing. Yes. Yes. And that's what intersection is supposed to do. To take the smallest. But another thing to note is that we have to make an assumption that one of them is finite. Because if all of them are infinite, it means we will not have this limit. We will not have this limit. If all the sets are infinite, then when you take the intersection of them, what are you going to get? An infinite set. For example, compare this, the sets of natural numbers, integers, reals, complex. Take their intersection. You take the intersection. What do you get? They are all infinite sets. All of them are infinite. Or are they finite? No. As says they are infinite. You take the intersection, you will get the smallest one. But what is the smallest one here? The set of natural numbers. The set of natural numbers is the smallest one. If you take it, it is the least smallest. And by what is the set of natural numbers? One, two, three, up to infinity. So it is also infinite, isn't it? It's also infinite. It has no finite limit. So that means this one will help here. If you are talking about this, this one, you cannot have a major or natural number because you don't even know what is the last natural number. You don't know. So you have to make assumption that at least one out of this set has a what? finite measure. It has some measure which you can quantify, which you can know, which you can say is one as measure n or m. Yes. So this is, uh, I think, the, uh, the very important point to stress here about the uh, infinite measure. And you can see this is also continuity, but it's continuity from what? From above. Because it means that these sets are decreasing from above down. Are decreasing, sorry, are decreasing from one up to the last one. That one is the smallest one. So it's measured from above. This one measured from below because the smallest one is the first one. The, the first one is. Good. Consider the interval P this interval and infinite. Of course this is a subset of what? Of R. This in your R is the real line. You have a real line here. You go to this. This is a subset of R. So supposing this is your E, supposing E, E, I is like this now. I to What does it mean? Let me, E1 is what? Then your E1 will be 1 to E2 will be to and so on and so forth. Now define major on EI to be the number of points. The number of Or let me just even say the standard uh, the vaccination. 
like bags. You know, it's not the bus measure is taking the difference between. Then what happens in that case? Then each of EI has no finite measure. Has what? No finite measure. Is there anyone with finite measure? By standard Labatt's measure. You know standard Labatt's measure, AB is what? It's B minus A. So if you want A, E1, measure of E1, what will it be? Infinity minus what? Is it finite? You know, what is infinity minus? It's infinity. It's actually infinity. Sorry, it's not finite. This is not. E2 minus major E2. What of major of E2? Infinity minus. This is also infinity. All of them are not finite. So what is the intersection? What of the intersection now? What of the intersection of E9? I from 1 to E2. What do you have? You know, you attach the major. What do you we take the intersection of the one to infinity, two to infinity, three to infinity? The intersection will be empty set. Why is it an empty set? One is not, not, not at all. One is not at all. I want to put it on the other. You know, there were absence of common. What I mean by, <coughs> by empty set is that if you go out to infinity, you will have infinity to infinity. Because you have 10, 1 to infinity, 2 to infinity, maybe up to infinity to infinity. What is infinity? You need to give it to just in one place. So you have this. There are no different. It's not an empty. It's not an empty. So it's empty. It's only a small point here. Our measure of empty set is what? It's zero. So it means that there's no measure here. So there's no measure. There's no measure. Consider the interval k, k plus 1. Standard and I use it, consider this interval, or n, n plus 1, or n. Okay. This is an interval of the real line. Also. So on the basis of uh, Our Labatt standard, standard Labatt's major uh, e, e i is the interval i to i plus one for i in n is your natural numbers, then it follows major of uh, EI is actually equal to 1 over I. This is very clear on the basis of Labex, standard Labex. You just take the difference between I plus I. So, IE, each of EI has a finite width, finite width. So you can say each one has finite width. But 
there are no finite sub-collection of EIs in R. But there exists no finite collection of EI that covers R. You cannot have finite number of them that cover R. You want to cover R? Of course, you have to have finite, infinitely many of uh, EIs because there should be so many that you cannot count them. This is an interval with one unit, uh, unit interval. So that means, therefore, EIs are sigma finite. Okay, but not finite. So this distinguishes between zigma finite. We cannot have, uh, for example, if you take this red line here, and I ask you to, to enumerate, I give you an assignment to enumerate all of the unit intervals in half. All of them. You cannot give me all of them. Because after some time, you will get tired. Because so, there, there, there exists no finite connection. Uh, collection. Collection. Collection of EI. That covers R, R the real language. But it's sigma finite because the, the intervals, the, the major, is finite. When you, when you measure each one of the one, one is a finite. So it will take countably many intervals. You can only, so it's not finite, but it's countable, of course. Can say E1, E2, E3. Measure the number of points in each interval, which is also not. This is why it's is standard Lavax. If I say my mu wants to take all of these, if I decide to say mu is the number of points in EI. And for example, if you have E1, which is 1 to uh, 1 to 2, now what is mu of E1? Two minus one. No, my, my definition of mu is different, it's not, it's not like, Number of points. Yes, two. Mm -hmm. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. We have only two points with the interval zero, one to two. We have already had a series. Zero, one. We are talking about number of points. Okay. Are they funny? Now, number the family consisting the family consisting of cats and witches. The sigma object. Is it a sigma object? Or is it a family of cats? Well, this is only two sets, the X and the empty set. So the whole set. So you mean that you repeat the left half of the whole time? Sorry, I should try to talk once. The family consists of X, the your universal set now, and then the empty set. Does mm -hmm. it pursue your sigma and your of? Why you forgot about your Zigma algebra? This is Zigma algebra is simple. It's even trivial. This is trivially, actually, a solution. I will just say trivially. I think it's 
Of sigma algebra is closure, isn't it? Yes. What is the complement of x? It's empty, it's here. What is the complement of uh, empty? <coughs> Remember, complement of x is x minus itself. Complement of empty set is what? x minus empty which is x. So then. What's the what of the union? X union empty set is X there. What's the intersection if you like? You don't ever need the intersection any. This is uh, enough to so this is a uh, big man. Trivial. This is the smallest sigma algebra collection of countable. Subsets of X. The secret you will use is this subset. They are all subset. You say so the solution you say each of each of SI is containing X. Is it? So and so, this implies what? SI complement will also be what? In X, because S is like the universal set now. You have X in one place and subsets of X. So the complement should also be there. So you have closure and complementation. Also, you also know, also, union of uh, SI will be containing X since. Each of SI is contained in S. So it's also close and countable unit. So you can now this is closure to this sigma. It's a family sigma i. It's a family. Okay, it's a family of sigma algebra. Then, what is the intersection of an eye of a sigma? Is it also is it also a sigma algebra? And that's the question mark. That's what I want to say. If you take the intersection of all of the all sigma eyes, are you also going to have a sigma algebra? If you take the intersection of sigma algebra, are you going to have a sigma algebra or something else? No, something. Something else. <laughs> like what? Why is my algebra like empty set? No, you cannot have empty set. It's not a possibility to have an empty set because uh, empty sets in themselves do not constitute sigma algebra. So what we are going to have is common sense question. Of course, the intersection of sigma i is going to be some smallest, <laughs> smallest uh, sigma algebra. Remember, each one is a sigma algebra. So if you take the intersection, I are going to smallest. But that smallest is a sigma algebra. It's sigma algebra. This is a sigma, a sigma algebra defined on a topological space. Topological space. X cow. Wire in this case, wire Sigma is closed and 
and uh, union, of course, counter with union, okay? Uh, open sex. Open sex. So, you know, you, you, know you need uh, Zygma to be close under uh, counter with union, isn't it? But in the normal sense, we require this to just be sex. In this case, we require them to be open subsets. One open set for someone subsets. Subsets. Of town. How many subsets now are? Subsets of EIs now. So each EI, ID, you are EI now, is each one in town. And it's an open set. So it's an an open set. Of course, from close sets. Because, but I don't let me not confuse you. Open set. Close sets. Can use close set construction. One will have this. We we'll call this Borel algebra. It's a sigma algebra. This is a Borel algebra. Yeah. This is a sigma algebra. This is indeed a sigma. If you like, you can you can test the properties. For example, if you have EI in tau, it's an open set. Is that it? What are EI complements? It's X minus EI. The complement is also, and it's also an EI. But it's also open. EI is open, the complement will also be in X. Because it's going to be union of open subsets. I'll give you an example. Suppose you have an interval. Maybe one to one to three. Well, this is my E1. This interval one to open interval one. What's the complement of it? What's the complement of U? It's minus infinity to one. Union what? Two, two. It's also open. It's open. So it's also an open. So it's close under complementation. And the countable union, of course, it also follows. That the union over I of EI is in tau for any EIs whenever EI are in tau. This is for a definition of topology from definition. Remember your basic topology topology. Hmm? You didn't do 